All right, you can be seated. My friends, as we come this morning, this is the summit on the black church. I need one of these young people to raise your hand and tell me who is the South Carolina resident bishop of this South Carolina conference. One of them. Come on, let me see your hand. Who's the bishop? Who's the bishop? Uh-uh, I don't need adults to tell them now. Come on, don't cheat. Don't cheat, because this is what we need to know. We need to see if our kids understand and know. All right. Don't let anybody ask you that question again and you don't know. The South Carolina resident bishop is none other than the Reverend Dr. L. Jonathan. Come on, say it again. Reverend Dr. L. Jonathan. Now, who is the South Carolina resident bishop? I want to hear the young people say it, and I want you to say it like you out there with your friends on a Saturday afternoon. Who is the resident bishop of the South Carolina Annual Conference? I only heard Sand Hill. Come on now. <laughs> Sand Hill. That's all I heard. Where the rest of y'all at? Who is the resident bishop? Uh-uh, not this side. Over here. The kids over here, who is the bishop? Who's the bishop? That's a preacher back there saying it. <laughs> Trying to make y'all look alive over here. Come on, kids. Y'all got to do better than that. You ought to be able to say that out loud. Who is your Lord and Savior? Oh, amen. You might not know bishop, but you know that. That's good. That's real good. That's good. At the Summit on the Black Church, one thing we want you to know, that a lot of people say a lot of things about the black church, but one thing you ought to know is that the black church have kept communities alive in generations past, and it's, gonna, it's still doing the same thing today. The black church is where we learn that we can get our groove on in church, amen? Because in the black church, you get to clap your hands any kind of way you want to do it. You even get to move a little bit while you're singing. All of it is about praising our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. There's not one right way to do it or any wrong way to do it. When you praise him, whatever makes you feel good, you just go on and praise him and feel good about it. Because one thing I know, because of him, every time I step up in the place, all I do is win. And it's because of him. Amen? Amen? You ought to be real with that thing and you ought to know. All, all I had to learn was that I am an heir to the kingdom of God. And when I found out my true status, oh, I, I became hard to deal with after that. Because, see, you got to know what an heir is. See, an heir is somebody who is royalty. And when I found out that I'm nothing more than a black queen, whoo! You can't stop me now. Because who I got walking with me is somebody stronger than any posse you will have. See, I don't need the Grand Hustler crew because I got Jesus' team walking with me. And because I've got Jesus' team, hey, I'll tell you again, <laughs> all I do is win. Hey, at this time, we're going to call to your front, Sand Hill praise team, and they're going to come, and they're going to bless us with a praise dance. And I'm going to get this gum out of my mouth after that, because, you know, if y'all was up here with gum in your mouth, I'd be telling y'all something. So I'm going to lead by example. Amen? Amen? There is a river. Yeah. They brought a message. They, they, they preached a sermon already this morning. There is a river yeah. of miracles. Yeah. And what they said, it's available to you. Amen. Amen. We praise God for that. Now, how many people we got? How many people from the Walterboro district in here? How many people from the Hartsville district in here? Amen. Any other districts? We got Columbia or Charleston, Charleston district. Amen. Orangeburg district. Orangeburg. All right. All right. Okay, now we're going to go on. We're going to move on now, but we got to ask these questions again. Tell me again, no adults, who is the South Carolina resident bishop? Not Sand Hill. Who is the South Carolina resident bishop?
All right. Who is the Walterboro District Superintendent? No adults. Who's the Walterboro? Y'all people from Walterboro. Who is the Walterboro District Superintendent? Huh? Woo, you just going to say his name like that? No reverend, no mister, no nothing. <laughs> Woo, all right. You got excited, but I know he don't let y'all just call him Thomas Pearson. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Who is the Orangeburg District Superintendent? Not No adults. We're going to say that again. Who is the Orangeburg District Superintendent? Reverend Dr. Frederick Yaboa. Who is the Charleston District Superintendent? No adults. Who is the Charleston District? Reverend Sandra Perel. Sandra, Reverend Sandra Stevens. Reverend Dr. Sandra Stevens Perel. All right, y'all got to remember to put handles on these people's names. Parents, youth leaders. Pastors, when you go back to your churches, you need to be giving this information to your children. They need to know that. They need to know that. Your district superintendent is, is there for you as young people as well as for the pastor and adults. So who is the district superintendent in the Hartsville district? Go ahead. Hartsville people know that thing. All right, that's how you're supposed to say your DS name, all right? Now, we're going to move on. We thank uh, Mr. Brandon Gaines for our opening and our, our prayer this morning. And now we're going to move on to the reason that we're here. Amen. We're going to ask young Tamaj, Tanasia. She's going to come and introduce our speaker for today. Yeah, give a hand clap. Good morning. Good morning. Our speaker will be Reverend Jeffrey Howard, and he was born February 4th, 1986 in Columbia, South Carolina to Sheila Howard and the late Roman Jones. He graduated from Euclid High School, Columbia International University, and he's a recent, grad recent graduate of the Lutheran Theological Southern Seminary, where he obta obtained his Master of Divinity degree. Jeffrey is currently enrolled in the Master of Sacred Theology program at Lutheran, where his area of focus will center on his thesis entitled, Prophetic Preaching as a Catalyst to Create Spaces for the Black Woman to Find Her Voice. Jeffrey is a firm believer in Jesus Christ, and he joyfully serves at the Trinity Baptist Church under the leadership of his father in ministry, the Reverend Dr. Thurman Bowens, Jr., who is passionate, energetic, and crazy about God's people. Jeffrey believes in being a voice for those who can't speak for themselves, and he stands solid on Luke 4, verses 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the, Lord, of the Lord's favor. Jeffrey credits, credits his personal model for life. For, Jeffrey credits his personal model for life from one of his mentors, Deacon Curtis Jackson Sr. In everything you do, be cool, stay humble. God won't bless you if he can't trust you to give him the credit in all you do. Without further ado, well, we welcome Reverend Jeffrey Howard. Again, he, he's here, Bishop Reverend Dr. L. Jonathan Holston is here for you as young people, just as well as every pastor, every district superintendent, and every adult in this South Carolina conference. Make the phone call, call the conference office, and talk to your bishop. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be in your presence, and I'm glad that you're here. 
I just want to say one thing is that you are the church of not just the future, you're the church of right now. And so what I would like for you to do is to get involved as much as you possibly can in your local church. Find something you need to do because you know more people than we do. And we will want, whether they say it or not, we will want your age one time. And it was ask of us to do the same. And so what I want to do is I want to be a supporter of all our young people. I want to be a supporter of you. I want you to do whatever God has called you to do and what God is leading you to do. We want to be supportive of that because we know that you are going to be the ones who are going to be our leader, leaders in the, in, the, in the present and the future. And we want to be supportive of you in every way. Let me also say that I don't know whether you all like to travel. Anybody like to travel here? All right. We have a couple of uh, trips that we normally take with young people. Um, normally I take uh, young people out of the, uh, out of, out of the uh, country from uh, if you're the age of 16 to 22. We go to Honduras in June. And uh, we, we stay for a week. We do some work. If you know, who knows Spanish in here? All right, then I need you. <laughs> you need to sign up quick. <laughs> but what I want to say to you is that expand and broaden your view and your understanding. Broaden your view. We go to Guatemala in July. Next year in 2020, we'll be going to South Africa and uh, Zimbabwe. So if you have an interest, you got the 2020. Uh, just watch the website, umcsc.org, and, uh, and uh, see when you can uh, fit in, get in where you fit in. And we'd love to have you young people in Zimbabwe, African University, will love to see you. <laughs> they see enough of us old folk. <laughs> and I'm not really that old. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not really that old. But... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm mature in my time, I put it that way, <laughs> and I feel it every day. But if, um, but if you, if you have, a, have a desire just to see the world and to see the world and see United Methodists in another place, in another setting, and to worship and experience that opportunity, we want to give you that opportunity as well. And, of course, whatever we want to do around South Carolina, let us know. We're going we're gonna to be able to do those types of things as well. God is, God is going to lead you in a significant way. God is good all the time, isn't he? And we want you to know that, that we are with you and standing with you. And whatever we can do, we want to make it happen. All right? Is that good enough? Now, I wonder about it blowing up my phone. <laughs> but then, listen, if you got something, call me. And we'll see what we can do to help it. Thank you, and God bless. I mean, I can't say much more about this, but, I mean, I want to just lose it right here, but I had to kind of keep my composure a little bit. You know, I can't sing, I can't dance, you know, but man, you all ushered in the spirit of God. And I don't, and listen, if you can't feel it, something, we need to check your pulse because you young, young people are ushered in the spirit and we thank God for that. And certainly we thank God for everybody in their perspective places that made this moment happen. Uh, certainly I don't take it uh, without um, regret to uh, leave my own family because I told them that, listen, you they missed out on something last night. I got down here last, late last night, but I met, uh, heard Bishop Sharma Lewis throw down. And then to get up early this morning, it's 9 o'clock. You know, it's dreary outside. It's cold in here. And then we get in here, and y'all just bust us in the head with the Lord. So <laughs> thank God for that. Amen. Really quick, really quick, um, for my young people particularly, um, if you don't have one of these sheets here, I call them my get lit sheets. They're right, right there um, behind with the land with the purple, raise your hand for me. I'm looking straight at you. Um, right there, yes. So, yes, ma'am, that's fine. You okay? So, I just want to make sure all my young people got this right here, okay? Amen. Amen. Where my young people at? Everybody say, get lit. Get lit. Okay, now listen, that was good. But I, I want next door to hear you. Amen. Say it loud. Say, get lit. Say it louder. Get. One, two, three, get. There you go. Okay, all right. We're going we're gonna to get it. It's 9 in the morning. I understand. I understand, but we're going to wake up. Amen? Amen. So listen, the theme of, uh, of the youth explosion is um, it's your church now. And as Bishop said and so many others, you all are not the leaders of tomorrow. You're the leaders of today, this moment. Amen? Amen? And so I want to coin, because I know we're living in a generation where you guys understand technology, and that's all you know. 
So I want to coin the phrase, by the end of this discussion, you all will not only get lit or be lit, you'll turn up your light. Everybody say, turn up your light. light. Matter of fact, look at your neighbor and say, turn up your light. light. Find another neighbor because that neighbor wasn't good enough and say, "Turn turn up your light. All right, amen. All right, next slide for me. Amen. So who am I? Who is this Baptist preacher that came all the way down to the low country to Charleston for a United Methodist Conference? And so next slide, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about who I am, okay? So this is me. Young people, this is me. This was me a couple years ago. Somebody say grace. Grace. I was gang banging. I was banging. And I was a show enough blood in Columbia, South Carolina. I grew up in Grand Street Apartments, right around the corner from the United Methodist headquarters on Colonial Drive. My mother transferred us over to Latimer Manor. Um, and at the age of 12, I became a man, the man of the house. Uh, my stepfather left us, um, was strung out on drugs, and I was kind of forced to have to take care of my younger sisters at an early age. And so when we talk about, like, gifting and, and what's in you and how that plays out in the church, I didn't know church. I just went to vacation Bible school over the summer, but I didn't know church. And so where I got lit at was for the gang life. And so the gang life attracted me. I I felt I never felt like I was good enough in school. Um, I was that shy guy. Never, you know, you got the athletic crew. Somebody say athletics. I, I was not the athletic guy. Um, you got the smart people. Say smart people. I wasn't smart. Uh, who else we got? We got the cool people. Say cool people. I wasn't in the cool group. I was that guy trying to fit in. I get, you know, when you're in your commons area, your cafeteria, you got your groups. I was that guy to myself. And so when the gang life approached me, the gangs approached me during that time, I felt like, hey, this is my opportunity to join it. And so at your age, uh, what's, the, what's the age group in here? 10, 10 year olds, 11, 12, 18? Okay. So this was around about the 12, this was around about the 14, I think I was like 14 in this picture. I definitely know here I was 18. And so this was me. And so when I left Eau Claire High School uh, in 2004, they gave me two options. Say two options. options. Death or jail. That's what they told me. So while my friends were going to the SC State in Orangeburg or they were going to the military and they were going to do things in college, this was me leaving out of high school. And they told me, Jeff, you're going to either die or you going to jail. That's all you got. That's your future. Somebody say the devil is a liar. <laughs> and so in 2005, I left out of the house in all red. i never forget it. Young people, I can't stress this enough. Your parents know what's best for you. Amen. Adults know what's best for you. They ain't, they're not telling you nothing. Anything that they didn't go through. Maybe be a little different in time age. They probably had Otis Redding and Marvin. Get, come on back, y'all. Come on back. I'm just testing the waters. Just testing the waters. Just testing the waters. <laughs> Yeah, see, somebody went back already. Come on back, come on back, come on back. So, so for me, that, that day, I had on a red bandana. I left out the house. My mother said to me, she said, listen, if you get in trouble tonight, don't call home. And I said, I'm all right, I'm good. So I left the house that day, and I got to uh, Columbia uh, Place Mall, Columbia Mall at the time. And I got in trouble, and I got locked up. And listen, we talk about Black Lives Matter. The cop was so intimidated to me that she put me in two sets of handcuffs and left me on a hot police car. If you ever talk about hot, she had me cuffed on the police car, right? And so they took me to jail. I'm in this this area that they have no mattresses because they ran out of mattresses. And I slept overnight, and I looked out that window. Never forget it. It was barbed wire. And I asked the Lord, has my life gotten this bad? I find myself behind these walls. The next morning, I got up, and they said, it's time to eat. And they give you this tray, right? And on this tray was a hard piece of cornbread. The milk was warm. Anybody like pinto beans? Anybody like pinto beans either? Anybody like beans? Okay, beans, greens, collard greens, anybody? Okay. They gave me these pinto beans that had water in it, and they were hard. And the cookie looked like something was crawling on it. And then anybody like green uh, green eggs and ham? My ham was literally, look at all, bless her heart. Amen. (laughs) That's so hard. Listen, listen, I, 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 there was green ham in front of me, okay? Yeah, she liked the book, but I listen, I literally had green ham in front of me. Somebody say, Thanksgiving, we're not supposed to have green ham, okay? 
And so I had green ham on this plate. And so anyway, I got before the judge, and, and the judge looked at me. And that's, that's never a good feeling when you're sitting behind a cage, and they got you handcuffed, and you got somebody who has the power of your life literally in their hands. And on the other side of this cage was my mother in tears. That's never an image that a mother should have to see, that her, her firstborn is behind a cage, handcuffed. So when I got out, she gave me two options. And she said, you're either going to get it together or you're going to get out of here. Next slide for me. Somebody say, God's grace. God's grace. Here I am, 10 years later. I'm the first in my family to be married. That's my beautiful wife, Tiffany. That's my queen. And then this is recently my two-year-old toddler. This is Elizabeth. Hey, Amen. Yeah, this is, that's my pride and joy. We call her Ladybug. And so uh, uh, statistics say if I show you my family, you'll listen more. So I'm just going to show you my family. Amen. <laughs> just side note. But anyway, but seriously, by God's grace, here I am 10 years later. And I have a beautiful family. I just recently graduated with my Master of Divinity. And I'm working on my third... And I, I, just, I just give God all the praise, honor, and glory. Next year, I'll be going to the School of Prophets, that Gammon Theological Seminary. Amen. So I'm not, I'm not saying that as a plug. I really mean I'm going for my doctor to ministry. But I remember in 2004 what that teacher told me. She said, death or jail? And here I am by God's grace. Amen. And so when we talk about this, young people, when we talk about uh, why we're here today, the summit of the black church, and what that really means and, 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 the, and the, uh, the catalyst the black church is and the church period, how it leads us. Young people, we're standing literally on people's shoulders who got us. I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for the Lord bringing me to my church, the Trinity Baptist Church, and introducing me to people like my father in ministry, Dr. Thurman Bowens, or my mentor, Perry Oliver. I would not be where I am today if he wouldn't have brought me some church mothers who said, listen, young man, you have to pull up your pants. You're going to have to start talking. You have to start dressing like you're going someplace. I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for the black church. Amen? And so as we go to our next slide, I want to kind of usher us into why we're here today. Everybody say, it's my church now. Put your hand on your chest and say, it's my church now. Amen. So I want to give a little backdrop. Uh, I didn't want you to think this is just all Howard. You know, I don't want you to think that, you know, take this and say, Bishop, he was just up there talking. This scripture is going to be our platform for you young people today. And it's found in Matthew 5, 16. Let, put your name right there. Let your, your name, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who's in heaven. Next slide for me. And so we know that uh, for that backdrop, for that text in Matthew, what was going on during that time was, was that the society had got so bad, right? And so folks had started feeling the pressure, you know. Uh, they wasn't sending pipe bombs in the mailboxes, but the, but the government and things like that were corrupting the system. And so what you had was a bunch of believers who said, well, what's the point? Why, you know, why, why, why Jesus? Why, why do I got to, I mean, what, what's the point? Nothing ain't getting better. Just seems like the bad or, or prop, you know, you know uh, being blessed and here I am trying to make it and ain't nothing good going for me. What, what's the point? And so Jesus says, wait, whoa, hold up, wait a minute. I hear your concerns, but I want to remind you who you are. And Jesus says, first of all, that you're blessed. And he gives this long list of why you and I ought to be blessed. And then he goes on to talk about how we ought to be salt and how any cookers in here, anybody know about salt? Salt does what? Adds flavor. Too much of it can take you out, but we just talking about adding flavor today. <laughs> Amen. And so anything that you do, you ought to make better. Everybody say make better. Make better. When you're around and when you're in your particular context, folks ought to say, because you're here, Things got better. I heard Rev say, Brandon's coming. She immediately got excited. Everybody, because she, she knew that, that singing may have not been her gift, but she knew she saw Brandon. Brandon was going to what? Bring in the, you know. When people say, uh, is it Sand Hill? Did I say that right? Everybody say Sand Hill. Listen, if nobody else can praise and worship, if I know they're in the house, I know the Spirit of the Lord's coming. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? That's what people ought to say. And so Jesus gives this long list, and then finally he reminds the people. He says, listen, 
you got a gift. Everybody say gift. You have a gift, and because of that gift, everybody ought to be able to see it. And they ought to be able to see it in such a way that they ought to stop and say, man, listen, you got it going on. I want to know your God. And so because of that, 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 you know, getting to know each other piece, that's what we're going to do this morning. Everybody say get to know each other. So my young people, I want you to do one thing for me. We're going to move across the aisle, okay? That's right. Somebody say, "Uh uh-oh. Somebody say, "Uh uh-oh, I got to get up. That's right. We're going to have to get up. We're going to move around. So all my young people, and this is a good time for the adults to kind of transition back, and I want all my young people up. So I want you young people to find six people that you're unfamiliar with or maybe you know, but I don't want the Sand Hill Fellowship in with just the Sand Hill. I want you to move down to the low country of Charleston. Charleston, you go up to Orangeburg, Orangeburg. Everybody across the aisles. I want you to find six people that you are unfamiliar with this morning. And this is what I want you to write down. Yes, ma'am. Oh, no, no. Leave your stuff. Leave your stuff. Leave your stuff. I want you to find six people, and I want you to get their name. I want you to get what they think they're gifted at, one gift. I want you to find out what's one thing about you that that sets you apart, that's unique about you. And then I want you to get their district area, okay? Everybody say district area. Okay, so find six people and move across the aisle, amen? Everybody go, move. Find six people that you don't know, so everybody should be moving. Does everybody feel welcome? Everybody feel welcome? All right. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to give somebody the mic, and I want you to tell me about your people that you met, because y'all are, y'all are, like, really into each other. So is it? Harmony. Harmony. Harmony? Harmony, tell me about your people. Uh, uh, Just tell me about one person. His name is Bernard. His gift is art. Who is Bernard? Where's Bernard? Bernard? Stand up, Bernard. His gift is what? Art. Art. And what district is he from? Walterburg. Thank you, Harmony. Everybody give Harmony a hand clap. Good job. Thank you. Great job. With a prize? Oh, oh she gets a prize? Yeah. Okay. Harmony? She oh, says you get a prize. Nice. There's $10, Harmony. Amen. I got, I got Somebody say blessed. <laughs> Somebody, did you get <laughs> She put me on the spot. Yeah. I guess. Well, somebody, somebody get Bishop number. We're gonna write a check out. We're gonna put it on his tabs. Somebody say Bishop's tab. They all hesitant. Everybody scared. It's okay. It's okay. Tell me about one person. What's your name? Baseball. Okay, so okay, so what I want you to I know we've had a good time fellowshipping and, and for the adults, you know, my apologies. We'll make sure we get you a cup of water or something like that, okay? <laughs> something like that. Okay. So young people, young people, this is what I want to leave. This sets the tone for what we're doing. It's one thing to say that we got gifts, but not only do I have a gift, how am I using my gift? How how am I using my gift? Is my gift just for me? Is it, is it something that I'm just holding on to? Or is it something I'm sharing with? And so you won't know that if you don't move across and know your neighbor. Amen. You know, your neighbor, when we go to church, sometimes we go, we got the acolytes, we got, you know, we into it, praise and worship. The praise and worship leader calls us to. We got scripture reading. You know the full order of worship. And oftentimes we just stand, we do our thing, and we never look to our neighbor and know that my neighbor could be struggling. That my neighbor could be hurting, that my neighbor could be one whatever it is away from cutting themselves or they're being bullied. You never know. And so I want you to use your gifts because it's just not just for the church. As Bishop said, we ought to, Bishop uh, Lewis said, we ought to be taking this to the street. You ought to be taking this to wherever you find yourselves, whether it's the basketball court, whether it's in school when you're sitting there with your teeth, wherever. And so I want to ask you this question, and it's something that you don't have to answer, but I want you to ask yourself. How am I using my gifts or talents right now for God? Not last week, 
not over the course, you know, I know how many people uh, like New Year's uh, resolutions and I'm going to, you know, uh, lose 50 pounds. I know that was my testimony at the beginning of the year and somewhere along the line I just, you know, fell off. Pray for me. I'm just simply saying that we say one thing and then we don't always mean it. Or we get so frustrated with life or get aggravated and we just say, you know what, I, nah, I, I'm, I'm through with that. And so I want you to ask yourself, look at a hard look at yourself. How am I better in my church right now? How am I better in the Orangeburg District or the, the, uh, the uh, Hartsville District or the Charleston District or the Columbia District? How am I making my current home church better? Is my pastor, can my pastor say great things about me? Can my teachers say great things about me? Can my coach say wonderful things? What do my friends think of me? Not, not my friends that follow me on Snapchat. No, not those friends. Not those friends that just see me send a tweet out and like it and send it back or retweet it. What do my friends say about me? Next slide for me. And so we know without a shadow of a doubt that we all have at least one gift. Say one gift. One gift. We all have one gift. I know some have multiple gifts. We, I mean, some are just good. But we at least have one gift. So gifts are given to us by God. I didn't inherit it. I, I didn't, you know, it just was given to me that uniquely shapes me for who I am and who you are as young people. And so we're going to delve into some scripture. Amen. Write this down, young people. Or as you're writing this, I want to ask you a question before you write. I'm sorry. What is a spiritual gift? If somebody had to ask you or you. Oh, she got a hand raised. Come on. What's your name? Tanasia. Dancing. Would you say dancing? I would say a gift given from God. A gift that you hardly recognize, but you still do it by reflex. My future bishop right there. Amen. Come on, Harmony. Say, give me some harmony. Love that. What's a spiritual gift? A spiritual gift is like a gift by God as known as talent. Thank you so much. See, everybody, listen, listen. And I want you to write this definition down, okay? Thank you so much, you three. I want you to say this. My spiritual gift, as you're writing, my spiritual gift is a special ability given by the Holy Spirit to me in order to strengthen the ministry abilities of the church. One more time. My spiritual gift is a special ability given by the Holy Spirit to me in order to strengthen the ministry abilities of the church. And so what that means is, is that I've been given, you have been given some unique abilities, not to just hoard it, not to just keep it to myself and I got to bury it, you know, I, I no. It's to benefit, what's say your name for me again? Bernard. Bernard ought to know that you can dance. Didn't you say you can dance? That she said that. Um, say your name for me right here in the black hoodie. That's right. I caught you. That's right. What's your name? Come on. What's one good thing you're good at? I like video games. You like video games. So you can multitask, right? Isn't that good? So we ought to see you be the next person to create a video game for the United Methodist Church. Amen? Amen. Yes. Right. Yeah. What did What's your bishop? Dr. Bowman. Not, <laughs> amen. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. Listen, give him a hand clap for that. Other, other people ought to know your gifts. And so for that very reason, we're going to delve into some scripture. So I want you to write this scripture down. 1 Corinthians 12 and 7. 1 Corinthians 12 and 7. I'm going to read it in the message translation. This is what it says, y'all. God's various expressions 
of power are in action everywhere. But God himself is behind it all. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. And so your gift and the very thing that you have inside of you is to show God for other people. Here's a few, here's a few of them. Wise counsel. Everybody say wise counsel. wise counsel. Everybody say clear understanding. Clear understanding. Somebody say simple trust. Simple trust. Healing, the sick. Healing the sick. Miraculous acts. Miraculous acts. Preaching. 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 Distinguishing between spirits. Who has uh, their cell phones on them? Oh, man, look. Look, hands shot right up. Amen. I want you to read first. Somebody uh, pull out 1 Peter 4 and 10. 1 Peter 4 and 10. Somebody else pull out 1 Corinthians 12 and 11. Now, all of my older people know reading the scripture, okay? I want the young people to do it. I don't want to say older. Let me, let me backtrack. Those who are wise among us. Amen. I don't want to offend nobody. Uh, first, uh, first Peter 4 and 10. 1 Corinthians 12 and 11. And then somebody find me Romans 12, 6 through 8. Okay? Who got the first scripture? Raise your hand. Great. Say your name and what district you from. Um, my name is Aaron, and I'm from the Walterboro District. Uh, oh, uh, Reverend Jonathan Holster. As every man hath received the gift, even so ministry, minister the same one to another, as good as stewards of the mindful grace of God. I love that. First of all, it says we ought to use our gifts one to another. Yeah. Your gifts are to edify one another. All right. And so when we talk about standing on the end, not when we get up and not watch the room like that, but they may hear you, mm-hmm. but they may see you come. Relationships matter. Relationships matter. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's My DS is Reverend Jonathan Holston. Well, no. I mean, Reverend Thomas Pearson. Reverend Jonathan Holston. Jonathan Pearson. No, Reverend Reverend Thomas Peterson. Amen. Give me your scripture. 
But all these worketh the one and the same spirit, dividing to each one severally, even for even as he will. Football and music production. What part of football? Uh, running back. Okay, so you gotta you gotta have like endurance to do that, right? Yeah. So I can't. I mean, so if I got this right here, if I got this right here, I can't really get out on the field, can I? Somebody say this is my friend. This is my athletics. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, read for me, Jordan. Um, oh wait, twelve through. Six. Romans twelve six. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If the gift is prophesying, then then prophesy, then prophecy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, then do it di diligently. If it is to show mercy, then do it cheerfully. Amen to that. Thank you, my brother. Listen, so if you got the gift of giving, give. If you got the gift of singing, anybody sing? Where my singers at? Not the adults, young people. Where my singers at? Amen to that. Listen, if you can sing, sing. That's your thing. I, I, can't, I can't hit an octave nothing. That's not, that's not it. Where, where, are my, where are my dancers at? I had a lot of dancers in here. Listen, if dancing is your thing, you ought to be able to not just do that in church. You ought to be able to dance wherever you're at and still give God the glory. Amen. Nobody should be able to say that's Cardi B right there, and I'm a Cardi B lover, okay? But... They, it should be some distinction between you and who she is. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anybody like rap? Oh, my gosh. See that? Love it. We ought to be able to do it in such a way that glorifies God and not have you look up like the person that was in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue with the president looking crazy on TV. Right. You should be able to do that in such a way that glorifies God. Amen. Where my artist at? I had a few people that love art. Where, where, my art. where my drawers at? Anybody like to draw? Anybody like the journal? Who, where my writers at? Listen, I, I need y'all because I'm in my master's program and I need help writing. No, I'm serious. You guys, you guys write. Listen, you are our future authors. You are the Maya Angelos. You are the, you are these people. You guys write and write it in such a way that when they look back over our history, they'll be able to say you and you and your name was on the New York best, uh, bestsellers books and stuff. Your gifts matter. Each has been given the gift, and if you do it, do it well. You don't have to be jealous of nobody, because what matters? Relationships. This, the United Methodist, which I love about the United Methodist, the United, Meth the United Methodist denomination is about resources. It's connectional. We are connected, not just as brothers and sisters in Christ, but we are connected. I ought to be able to say up there at the Sand Hill Da, 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 or down in the low country or wherever you find yourself at. If I didn't call your district out, it ain't because I don't know it. It's just because I just don't know it. Amen? <laughs> Y'all got that? Come on, wake up, wake up. It's 10 in the morning. So we're going to go to the next slide. So now that we got a good handle on gifts, write those scriptures down again. Those scriptures are 1 Corinthians 12, 7, 1 Peter 4, 10, and then 1 Corinthians 12, 11, Romans 12, 6, and 8, okay? And so, Brother Jeff, Listen, you talking, I hear that, that's good, that's Bible. What does that got to do with me? Well, we're going to talk about that. Everybody say, how can you use your gifts? How can, use your gifts? how can I use my gifts? Everybody say, how can I use my gifts? How can I use my gifts? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Now, since my adults wanted to help out, I need about five adults. Matter of fact, how many, people, how many young people I got in here? Let's count them out. How many young people? Somebody give me a head count of the young people, and I need five adults. Five adults. Come on up to the front. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Amen to that. I want you to grab a yellow sheet and a marker for me, okay? All right, how many, somebody give me a head count of the young people. How many young people we got? I tell you what, we're going to count it like this. It looks like I got, let's say about 40. All right, so we're going to count it off. One, remember your number. Two, two. Three, four, five. Okay? Everybody got that? One, two, three, 
for, what number are you? What's your name? Olivia. Oh, like, I love Olivia. I got it. Okay. What's your number? One, two, three, five. Two. Oh, you, okay. One, okay, all right, great. So I want to divide the room up. So you stay here, or and two go, three, two go, one, two in the back corner back there. Yeah, go back there, find a wall. So one, yeah, just go back to the back corner. You stay up there, or right, you to the back, y'all to the back, and then one over in the corner right here to the side. Okay, all right. So here's what we're gonna do. All my ones, I want you to go up here, up front. All my ones, all my ones, all my twos. I want you to come up here. All my threes go to the back. All my fives come right here. And all my fours go back to the back corner back there. Okay. And so here's what we're going to do. All of the adults, all of the adults who are going to be writing, don't say a word. Everybody, all the adults say, don't say a word. Say a word. Amen to that. I want you young people. You young people, to tell the adult writing, I want you to tell them what can you use your gifts for? How can you use your gifts today as a young person in your district, in your church, in your school, wherever, in the, in the mall, down at the park, wherever? I want you to tell that young person, that, uh, that adult who's writing, tell them how are you going to use your, your gifts from God. Spend some time talking. All right, group one. Group, I guess, yeah, group, what group are y'all? Two and five, y'all just kind of stay in place, hang tight, because we're going to just look at that, okay? All right, so group one, what you got? Just give us a couple things. How are y'all going to use your gifts? Um, what's your name? Nadia. Okay, what district you from? Um, the Walter Road District. Who's your bishop? The bishop is Reverend Jonathan Holston. Amen to that. Okay, give me a couple things from that list. Um, we could use our gifts from God to help others. To encourage others and to what's a, what's another good one I should say to what to teach future generations teach them how, teach them what? Um, the proper way I guess to walk with God and okay. you know right. have a relationship with Him. Okay, so what does that look like at your home church? Um, think about that. Okay. I know that's on the spot. Yeah. Be thinking about that because I'm gonna put you on the spot. I don't want you just to say I want you to say Lord I want them to love Jesus. All right, well, how? Okay, so I'm going to ask y'all questions like that because I want you thinking about this, okay? All right, group, what's this? Okay, so who haven't I heard from? Oh, I'm not Harmony. What's your name? Brandon. Brandon. What district you from? Charleston. Charleston district? Who's your DS? Oh, that's okay. Who's your bishop? Uh, Reverend Holston. What? Reverend Holston? Yeah. Bishop Holston? Yeah. Dr. Holston? You sure? Yeah. You positive? Yeah. Say it loud. Say, he's my bishop. my bishop. Put your hand right here and say, he's my bishop. Okay. All right. Tell me a couple things on that sheet right there. Uh, got what you got? What y'all got up there? Forming relationships. How, what does that look like to you? Uh, to, like, come together and talk and st talk about things to each other. Like, like what we're doing now? Yes. That's what it looks like? Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Keep uh, going. To inspire others to do good. Uh, to spread the word. Role, to be role models, to obey God, and to express feelings. What does, it, what does spreading the word look like to you? Uh, to people who don't like normally do this, do okay. things like this. How, how would you spread the word? How would you spread the word? Probably on social media. What, what's your favorite social media site? Uh, probably Facebook. Facebook? You like Facebook? Yeah. So when you leave here today, what you going to put on Facebook? <laughs> all right, all right. Be thinking about it. Be thinking about it. <laughs> Good job. Appreciate you. All right. This is what group five. All right. So I need a spokesperson for group five. Come on, come on down. You looking? Come no hide. You hiding from me? So that makes me want to bring you out. What's your name? What, what district you from? Kershaw County. Kershaw County. Who's your DS? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Who's your bishop? I don't know. You don't know? All right. So who's bishop? 
Uh, no adults. No adults, Rhea. I'm sorry. Well, who's the bishop? Okay. All right, we're getting there. Okay, so tell me a couple things. Helping the homeless? No, 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 you take that. Right. Helping the homeless? What does that look like? Like going out and then like helping them, like feeding them. Okay. Like giving them clothes and all that. Okay, what else? Um, encouraging others. Okay, how will we encourage them? Like, if they're, like, feeling bad about doing something, we can, like, encourage them to so do it. How would you encourage somebody? By helping them. Helping them how? By talking to them. Uh, what's your name? Say it loud. Kia, how would you help Kia out? Kia's hurting right now. How would you help her out? Talking to her. Okay, she's hurting on Facebook. Texting her. Amen to that. Give him a hand. All right, now, we're going to all move to the back. I want to all move to the back, okay? You guys are doing really good. Give him a hand clap. Aren't they doing good? Yeah. Amen. Who's your bishop? I don't need to say that louder. Who's my bishop? I don't want to hear no adults. Where my youth at? Who's my bishop? Okay, everybody raise your hand. Say, Bishop Holston. Bishop Holston. All right, we're gonna get we're gonna get excited about our bishop. All right, group three, group three. I need a spokesperson. Um, my man, what's your name? Yeah, you was hiding. You had didn't you didn't you say the Golden State Warriors wasn't gonna win? Didn't you say that? You didn't say that. What's your favorite basketball team? I don't like basketball. You don't like basketball. You like football? All right, what's your football team? Panthers. Panthers. Okay. All right. All right. So tell me. Give me a few things up here. Who's your DS? I don't know. You don't know what district you're from? Walter Fur. Okay, all right. Who's your bishop? Okay, who's his bishop? Bishop Okay, all right. Give me a couple things up here. Um, sharing. Sharing? Yeah. Okay, so how would you share? Giving, like giving stuff to people. What would you give? Would you give your hoodie away if somebody needed it? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Would you really give your hoodie away? Say that thing with conviction. Yes. Give my hoodie away. If someone really need it. Okay. All right. What else we got? <laughs> um, teaching others. All right. And what else? Um, praying for others. Okay. Praying for others. What would you pray for somebody for? Giving. I mean, having a bad, bad, better life. Better life. Okay. All right. Amen to that. Thank you. All right. And then our last group. Our last group, and then we all going to go back to our seats for just a brief second because I got one more activity, okay? All right, I need a spokesperson. Say your name. Tierra. I need you to speak up for me, okay? What's your district? Florence. Say that loud. What's your district? Florence. Who's your DS? Okay, who's your bishop? Bishop Holston. All right. What's your church? My church. Name yeah. of my church. Yeah, what's the name of your church? Mount Beulah United Methodist Church. Who's your pastor? Oh, yeah. Reverend Owens. All right, those, that's all right. We're going to call them out later. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Give me a couple things here. Um, we have, we can use the internet to like post dances to worship God, okay. you know, to get people involved in right. worshiping Him. Okay. And we have youth like in the church. We can use the youth in the church to help with like scholarships and things like that with school. Oh, oh somebody said school leg <laughs> free. School leg free. And okay, um, when did that bill come? Okay. Right, go ahead. And we could like make relationships, like helping other people to like build relationships, so people could get more involved with God and knowing who He is. Amen. To that. Amen. Thank y'all so much. Y'all can go back to y'all seats. Amen. Leave those leave leave those uh, sheets up because we're going to use them for just a second. Okay. Right. Great job, y'all. Great job. So, I heard a lot of great things. So, I want to give you a couple things to think about when we talk about how do we use our gifts, right? I want you to think about this. So, when you go back to your home church, I know we got our, our districts and I know we got our superintendents and our bishop, but we go back to our individual churches, our individual areas and stuff like that. 
how about cutting the grass at my church? <laughs> right? Um, how about reading to that older saint in the, in the congregation? That's a gift. You know, these are little things. I just want you to think about it. We go through praise and worship. We go through the preaching. We go through all of those things. How about saying, you know what? Sister Carolyn is going to Africa or going to, what did Bishop say, Guatemala? Listen, I'm not going to, anybody like canteen? You got, got canteens at your school? You know, like cafeteria? Where you, you know what I'm saying? How about saying, you know what? I'm not gonna take. I'm not gonna eat snacks this week, Mom. I'm gonna take that money. I'm gonna give it to Sister Such and Such, and she go over there. Missions. That's what that's called. Missions. Listen, we talk about mission field. Let me tell you what that looks like. God blessed me with the opportunity to go to Israel. I spent uh, last Christmas in Bethlehem, where Jesus was born. We read uh, my ring that's on my hand. I got it engraved in the Jewish quarter of Israel. It says, uh, my beloved is mine and I am my beloved's. Um, I had an opportunity to go to uh, London, England, Dubai, and India. Here's why I say that. You never know what God's going to place you at with your gift. It's not about me, but here's why I say, if you be good to your church, listen to me, young people, listen to me. Your home church, where you're at now, if you be good to your home church, I promise you the church will be good to you. Listen, mom, I want to go. I want to go with Bishop. Mom, look at that or auntie or whoever. That bill say four thousand dollars. Listen, that makes a difference. If folks can see the light of Christ in you and believe in you, they'll do anything for you. So I want to give you just like I said, practical things to think about when we say, "Well, how can I use my gift?" Listen, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna. Uh, what's a couple things I had down here? How about this? Um, I want to write notes to my pastor saying thank you. How many of you know pastors get depressed? How many of you know pastors have stress on them like none other? Okay, listen. What we see on Sunday morning is just a few minutes of, you know, I'm not going to say fun, but that's the exciting part. As a preacher, you get to stand and proclaim. But listen, when you come down off of that, they got to think about how the church bill is going to be paid. They got to be thinking about how people be, you know, fussing. You know, say fussing. We never know what the pastor has to deal with. Listen, they got the answer to the DS. They got the answer to the bishop. They got all kind of things. Pastor, I just want to say thank you for what you do. How about this? Maybe not in my home church. Mom, dad, auntie, cousin Junebug, thank you for what you do. Pookie now. Yeah, what she said. Pookie now. My teacher. Anybody got a favorite teacher? Oh, look, hands did not go up on that. All right, listen, all right. Somebody that you really like, thank you for what you do. One of the grandmothers. There was one particular man in my church, Deacon Billy Coker, who taught me about how to tie ties. And here's something that was very unique about that. He even told me about when politicians wear the red and the blue, what that means. And so now when you see the president of the United, well, for, uh, well you know, um, on, the, on, the, on the TV with a red tie, that serious, or any congressman in a red tie, that's something serious going on. If it's blue, it's something very relaxed. And so when I'm looking at TV now, even to this day, I always remember that one nugget that he gave me. And so what I'm saying is, is that you'll never know the magnitude. I just want to thank you for bringing me here this morning. Pastor, thank you for bringing me at 9 o'clock in the morning when I really want to be listening to my little Wayne or my Cardi B or whatever I want to do. Oh, come on, y'all. Y'all know y'all. You understand what I'm saying? Thank you, thank you for getting me up this morning because you know why? When we talk about the summit of the black church, these people around you, matter of fact, you young people, look at your neighbors, the older, uh, your older neighbors. You understand what I'm saying? They could be doing something very much better today on a Saturday morning, but they took the time out to bring y'all here. That's enough to tell them what? Come on, everybody say thank you. Because you matter. And so when we talk about, we talk about bringing our gifts to the church, that's what that looks like. What about helping and serving when we got our big functions going on? You know, these are practical things or helping out in worship. Nobody should have to find an accolade. I'm, I'm, listen, I don't like singing, but I'm going to light the fire today. I'm going I'm, I'm to lead in. You know, pastor, nobody else praying. Listen, I want to pray this morning. Or well, listen, I ain't good at none of that, but you know what I'm really good at? I'm really good at loading that CD in so the praise dancers can dance. I can, I can help out with 
uh, write in the bulletin because I can draw, I can write. Find your gift and say, you know what? When I go back to my church, my church is going to be better because of me. Everybody say me. Not Jeff, but me. Put your hand on your chest. Me. My pastor is going to be better because of me. My parents are going to be better because of me. Everybody say me. me. My teachers won't have to call my name because they'll be, I'll be listening. Everybody say listening. I know that's a lot, but I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> Amen. Next, we go, well, I'll tell you, well, before we go to that, um, I'm going to make sure I got it all. Three. Yeah, go to the next slide. Go to the next slide for me. Well, here's why we're here. I done gave you gifts. We done talked about practicality as far as, like, how we can use these gifts. Well, let's be really honest, okay? Can we be really honest? Let's act like the adults ain't in the room. Let's just act like they're not here. So this is what adults really don't say nothing. How many of y'all think church is boring? Uh-oh. See, we want, oh, yeah. How many of y'all think church is boring? Listen, you don't have nothing to be ashamed about. Let me tell you why you don't have to be ashamed. Let me tell you why you don't have to be ashamed. Because that's why we're here. This summit talks about ways in which we connect in the missing piece. How many of y'all know church membership is on the decline? Everybody say decline. How many of your young people do not want to stay United Methodist? See, you, you, listen, this is truth. This is truth. These older people know that. I'm older, wisdom in the room. They know that. Bishop knows that. And so this is why we say to you, you're not the church of tomorrow. You're not the church of yes, you're the church of today. And so your gifts, the things that God has given you, makes us better. Right? So how many of you really think church is boring? Your home church. You don't have to be ashamed. Here's why I say that. Because there are some things you just don't like about the church. But listen, it's not saying that we're complaining. We're saying, Pastor, look, or whoever, look, my youth pastor, listen, I feel like we can do these better, and I'm going, I'm going to do my part to help make sure the church is better. Why? Not just because of that. It's because I want somebody to know Christ, and when I invite them in, I want them to be lit. Everybody say lit. lit. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to get practical with you. Those same five adults who had their sheets, this is what I want you to do with my young people. This is what I want you to do with my young people. Young people, church born, I want you to write your own worship service. I want you to get creative. Listen, listen, how many of y'all didn't want to come here at 9 in the morning? Oh, come on, be honest. Right. Okay, so listen, listen, if you feel that way on Saturday, I know you feel that way on Sunday. Grandmama, come on here, come on, come on. Come on, you know church, listen, you better cut the TV off because we got to get up in the morning. It's going to be a long day. You understand what I'm saying? And so here's what I'm saying. I want you to be very creative. You got, everybody say gifts. Yeah. I want you to take your gifts and I want you to give me an order of worship. I want you to tell us what an order of worship looks like. I want you to give me the time. I want you to tell me when it's going to end. I want you to tell me what needs to go in. And listen, you got free reign on this paper. This is your order of service. This is what you're going to create. And then listen, if you were able to let me tell y'all a few things about that, I want you to be just as excited because this is your order of worship. This is what you say. Bishop says, this is what Bishop Holston says. Bishop Holston says, listen, this is your church and I commission you. So here it is. I want you to write it out. And I want you to be able to articulate that to these young people. I am, I am so sorry on time. We're just going to yell out a few things, okay? All right, really quick, really quick. Listen, you guys have been great. Tell me a few things that was going on in this church right here. Our church would start at 10 o'clock. We'd have an alkalite. We have one song. We have an offering. We have announcements and welcoming, and then we do the prayer. Okay. Is there a preach word in there? <laughs> no, I have a song. Okay. All right. On the move. Okay. See, I want you all to tell me what's going on in this group here. What's, what's, what's this church right here? All right, so our service will start at 10. Ours is not really complete, but we definitely believe that the acolytes should open up the church. Okay. Um, and then we have worship, but we didn't get a chance to finish. Okay, all right. Hey, you heard that about acolytes? Oh, that was, why is that significant? Because you're bringing the light in the church. You're, like, bringing in the spirit. Okay. Into the See, that's very, that's very important right there. I want that to be creative. Tell me why. What you got going on? All right, so our church will start at 10 through 11. Then we have the acolytes, choirs, pastors, lay speakers come in, a song, prayer, scripture, uh, another song, and then straight the, to the word. straight to the word. Okay. Why is that important? Is it time? You feel like yeah. you're wasting a lot of time? Okay. 
<laughs> you, I said no adults. Didn't I say no adults? Okay. Give me one more. Give me one thing here. What y'all got? Sunday school at 9 a.m. Why is that important? Why is that important? Because you still need to um, be able to study the Bible um, without the pastor. Amen to that. Listen, young people, listen, thank you. I know we time is consumed. Listen, I want to show you this quick video, and then we're done. Here's why I say that. I wanted you all to get very creative because what you have matters, and your voice matters in your local church. Amen. Amen? And so listen, I feel like this quick video will sum up what we have, and I want to thank you for having me come all the way down here to be in this experience. You guys have been great. And for my money people who I promise see me afterwards, and I make sure I get some change for you, okay? Show this quick video. Oh, and listen, oh, really quick, this is what lit mean on that paper. Everybody say, lead today. Lead today. Innovative. Innovative. Uh, team focused. Team focused. When I say I'm going to get lit, I'm going to get excited. But what does that look like, Brother Jeff? I'm a, I'm a leader today. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be innovative, and I'm going to be team-focused because it's about what? Relationships. Everybody say relationships. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Lead today, innovative, and team-focused. Amen? Show the video, and then we can have the speak up, and thank you again, okay? Here's what I'm going to leave you with. Um, I grew up at John Wesley, which is actually the church I serve at now. It's here in Charleston. And I can remember at the age of 16, uh, my, my pastor at the time, Reggie Thaxton, coming and asking me to give the message on you Sunday. And, uh, and it was a big privilege to be able to ask to be, be able to give that message. And, and I gave that message in church. And what happened after it was a lot of people came up to me and said, you know, David, you really ought to be, you really ought to be in ministry. You really ought to be a pastor. You really ought to do this because you, you spoke so well. But in my heart, I was going, you know what, that's just not what I want to do. And I grew up at a time where all I ever saw was the only way to work in a church was really to be a secretary or a senior pastor. And those weren't in my heart of what I really wanted to do. Um, and so I went to, I went to Clemson University and got a degree in recreation and, uh, and really didn't know what I wanted to do um, with my life other than the fact that I wanted to do recreation. But I remember those years of being a young person and saying, you know what, I want to do something in ministry, but I don't know what it is. And all of a sudden, I got this phone call as I was looking for a job um, from a friend that lived in Atlanta and said, David, you just got a degree in recreation. How would you like to come run a sports ministry in Atlanta? Um, I, I thought, what are you talking about? How is there such a thing as a sports ministry? And this church in Atlanta, um, Claremont Presbyterian Church, took a chance on me and hired me to be their sports minister. And so I had the opportunity to run sports of basketball and softball and soccer for a thousand families in the community that lived around that church. And we used that to reach out to people and meet them where they were and, and serve their needs. Um, from there, um, during that time, the youth leader left. They asked me if I would step in and be an interim youth director. That was something that I hadn't really grown up with either. And so all of a sudden, I had that opportunity. I started praying because things, things had grown so well and done so well, and I just felt it was time to make a move, and I started praying in a small church in, in Hilton Head called uh, St. Andrew by the Sea, United Methodist Church, with, with Willie Teague as their pastor, called me and asked me if I'd come start a sports ministry and, and help their youth ministry there. And I got the opportunity to go to that church and do those two things that I just love so much. And then about 11 years ago, I got a phone call that my home church here at John Wesley was losing their youth director. They had finally hired one after so many years and asked me if I would come and, and lead that group and have had the privilege of being a part of that group for the last 11 years. And so what I'm saying is there's a lot of opportunities out there to do ministry. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the adults that you have in your church are doing ministry day in and day out without even it being their job. It's just what they love to do. Um, several years ago, while in, uh, while in John Wesley, there was a ministry here called our... Um, Star Gospel Ministry, and it's a transitional home that houses about 25 men that don't have a home but have jobs and are trying to get into a place of home ownership. And so they offer beds for these guys. And we were trying to figure out what to do for them, and uh, one of my youth and I sat down and we started talking, and he started dreaming about giving those guys breakfast once a month on Sunday morning. And so Eli started just asking the congregation, hey, can somebody go down and cook breakfast for 25 people 
on the fourth Sunday of every month. And Eli started doing that and started, um, started this wonderful ministry now that we have at Star Gospel that's been passed through two other youth at this time that have been leading it. It's completely led by the young people of the church. Um, and that's really what you've heard today of looking out, stepping outside, and asking, what kind of ministry can you do? It's kind of easy to raise your hand and say, I'll volunteer to do something. But a lot of times we don't like that as much as dreaming our own thing and going to the church and asking, can we do this? And our churches are full of resources of, of able to do amazing things with it. And so today, as, as I present these, uh, these things that the, that the South Carolina Conference does, I'm not really asking you to volunteer to go to them. What I'm really asking you, if it's on your heart that you need your church to be at these, go back and talk to your pastor. Talk to the members of your congregation. I think it was said earlier by, 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 by Jeffrey up here about, you know, your church, if you're asking, your church wants to love you to the place where you can do the ministry that you are called to do. And so, um, so a couple of things come up um, every year that we do here. Um, and first of all, how many of you like basketball? How many of you play basketball? All right, we got a few hands that go up out there. Do you all know that we have a state basketball tournament every year um, for South Carolina that anybody can come and play in? And this year, we are trying to, to grow those numbers, and so we've actually waived the registration fee. So if your church has never played in this tournament or hasn't played in the last two years, there's no fee for you to come play in it. All you've got to do, young people, is find about eight people that will come and play basketball with you. And you might look and say, you know what, my church is really small, and I don't have eight people that will fit into my age group in, 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 in the male or female category, and it's going to be hard. This is a great outreach opportunity to go out and find eight people in your community that you're playing basketball with and say, hey, let's go to Camden and play in this tournament. And so, the, um, so we have the basketball tournament. The next one is Revolution. Anyone here ever been to Revolution? Oh, we got some Revolution folks over there? All right. Let's see. Who's been, who's been, uh, who's been at least once? Who's been twice? Who's been three times? Three times? Is that the longest? Three times right there? There we go. Oops. All right. Um, three times. Now, who's never been before? Who's never been before? All right. Who in here has never been before but is younger? Has anyone in here never been before? Who's the youngest that's never been before? How old are you? How old are you? Sorry. 11? 11. Anyone younger than 11 that hasn't been before? You asleep? <laughs> I'm, I'm almost there, too. How old are you? Eight. All right. Well, here's the thing. Revolution this year is celebrating its 10th anniversary. So for this young lady up here, you have never known a time where Revolution hasn't been offered in this conference. Here you go. Here's a shirt. And I tell you what, 11, you've only been one year of not knowing Revolution, but here's a shirt for you, too. All right. So, um, but revolution is an unbelievable, um, what I call just, just worship service that is done with high energy and everything else. And it's a gathering. Imagine worshiping together with more than 2,400 youth in Columbia all at one time. Here again, this isn't something I'm just asking you to sign up to go. This is something I'm really asking you to go and find somebody in your community that needs to know Christ and inviting them to revolution. Because that's what revolution is there to do. It's to be a fun, engaging way for you guys to have a place to bring friends to introduce them to Christ. So we ask that you, that you think of, uh, of revolution in that way. Um, the other one that comes up is Immerse. Anybody ever been to Immerse? Anybody ever been? We got one back there that's been to Immerse? Yeah, Immerse now is at Asbury Hills. Immerse is that one that really, we probably are saying, hey, raise your hand. But if you're really wanting to dive deep into what it means to be a Christian and find that community around you, that's what Immerse is about. Immerse is spending those days, spending time with, with, a, with a smaller community that really is engaging you to strengthen your faith. It's conversations like this of what is your ministry? What, what kind of thing are you going to do? Um, and then the last two. Does anyone know that 
for young adults, 16 and on up. There's a mission trip that this, that this conference goes on every year. Does anyone know where that's to? Anybody? I got a t-shirt if you know the answer. Anybody? Not Guatemala, but it's close by. Where, Honduras. There you go. There you go. Yeah, Honduras. And that is one of the things that our, that our bishop, Bishop Holston, has been really instrumental in getting started, um, of taking a group into, uh, into Honduras, and they work on providing clean water for, uh, for people there. And it is, a, it is an unbelievable experience of going and seeing how the rest of the world is. You know, I always say that, that we can do as much mission work here in this country, but until we go outside, we really don't understand how good we've got it. You know, we've got a Home Depot and a Lowe's within an hour drive of almost every place to go get supplies. When you're in another country and you're just trying to find a five-gallon bucket to mix concrete in, and it takes you half a day to find it, it's, it's a whole different experience of understanding what we've got. And then the last one, who knows the, uh, the mission project that we do across this state every, every summer, and there's over 40 different camps that are out there. Anybody know? Yeah, go ahead. It is like building houses. Yeah, yeah. You got one back there? Habitat for Humanity. That's, that's, that's a great one, but that's not the one that the United Methodist Church. It is Sockahatchee. You ready? Here we go. Coming all the way back. Oh, sorry. Bad pass. It's Sockahatchee. Sockahatchee is, um, for me, uh, we take our group to Sockahatchee at the end of July, and I got to tell you, I am worn out by the end of the summer. And to sit there and think, I'm going to go sleep on an air mattress and carry shingles onto a roof sounds like the most miserable seven days of my life. And I got to tell you, I show up on Saturday, and I'm sitting there going, what in the world am I doing here? I'm there on Sunday, and I've got a little bit of worship in me. I'm making some new friends, but I'm still like, you know, I could be at home watching TV, you know, having a nice meal that's what I want, not, you know, just what everyone else is eating. But come Tuesday or Wednesday, when I've been in that home working on it, and I've built a relationship with that homeowner, I know exactly why God placed me there. Even through all the why am I here, what am I doing, I don't want to be here, by Tuesday or Wednesday, my heart has changed into a big year. And I've been doing that for 16 years, and I still, on Saturday, go, God, why am I here this year? It's been a long, drawn-out summer. I don't want to be here. But... By Wednesday, I'm as excited as I can be. And by Thursday and Friday, when we're getting ready to leave, I don't want to leave because the friends that I make there, you come into a camp of about 60 to 120 people, and you leave that camp with so many great friends. And the feeling that you've got of improving someone's life, you actually watch hope come back into their life. When you meet somebody without hope, it is the most devastating thing to look at because they don't know where anything is coming from next. They don't trust you walking in the house because they've had different hopes and people, and they've let them down. And all of a sudden, you watch 10 to 12 young people walk in and bring somebody hope, and the world changes, and we know what we were created to do. Those are the things that the South Carolina Conference does. We ask that, um, that you go home and, and, and find the one that you're most passionate about. Go to your pastor, go to the adults in your church and say, hey, how do we make this happen? Chris Lynch is the, uh, is, the, is the congregational specialist that takes care of that, and he is more than willing to find ways to help you be able to get to those events um, any which way that he can. Also, he needs some youth delegates um, for annual conference. If that is something that you're passionate about, please talk to your pastor and have them contact um, Chris or go to SCMYP. In everyone's uh, packet that you'll get later on, you'll find this little... Um, this little flyer right here that's got all the things on it. So I really hope that you, uh, that you take a minute and, uh, and pray and think about one of those to do with your church this year. Thank you so much for letting me come in and, and talk to you. All right, those of you that were to receive the $5, it's $10 or it's two people. Come on up. All right, only one is moving, so, oh. Congratulations. Good job, good job. As we prepare to close, we're going to ask the praise dancers from Sand Hill 
to do one final number. And afterwards, we would do our closing. And Doris Seals, make sure you look back. She has the red shirt on. If you do not receive a T-shirt today, make sure she has your name. She'll, get, you'll, she'll give you the information that she needs so we can make sure that you do have what the others will receive today. Uh, we only ordered a limited amount of T-shirts, but we want to make sure that all of you receive your T-shirts for being present. Amen? All right, y'all didn't say that with enthusiasm. Let us welcome Sand Hill once again as we prepare to close. And let us thank God once again for our presenters. Amen? Uh, excellent job. Yeah, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Oh, oh, come on. What y'all got for me? Let me hear you say, oh. oh. Say, ho. Oh. Now holler, y'all. That's a scream or a holler. That was a scream. All right? We're going to scream then. Let me hear you say, oh. oh. Say, oh. oh. Now scream. All right, what are you, United Methodists? Come on, what are you, United Methodists? Say it again. Say it again. Where y'all at? Y'all at the summit on the what? Come on, y'all could do better than that. You at the summit on the what? All right, my friends, as we leave here today, remember that you are important. Remember that you are special and that you have a gift. So when you go back to your churches, remember to share that gift with your church. Let them know what you're good at, and you do that. See, in my next life, I'm going to be like, like, like little Brandon Gaines that came up here and was doing all that singing, because I used to sing a whole lot, but the Lord done messed that up for me now. He only want me to preach, so he won't let me do all that. So as we prepare to leave this place, my friends, again, if you, have, if you do not have a T-shirt, remember to see Miss Doris Seals as you leave out. All of our young people, remember to stop by the table and get a bag. And come on and give a hand clap for, Mr. for Reverend Brandon Howard. He showed up and he showed out. Amen. And remember, just like young Brandon Gaines was on, what was he on, y'all? Sunday's best. Remember that some of you, these girls dancing, come on and give it up for saying hell. All right. Almighty and our loving God, we thank you now for all that has been said and done. Lord, as, as these your young people leave this place, Father God, remember to always help them know that they are heirs to the kingdom of God, that they are special and that they are yours. No matter what the world may say to them, Father God, help them to understand that they are beautifully and, and, and they are wonderfully blessed in the sight of God. So they are winners. And we thank you for that right now. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right.